This happened when I was with my ex and living with him and his family. I lived there for about eight years and many strange events occurred throughout those years. Here is one incident. My ex's grandmother lived with them for many years. She lived there up until the day she was too sick and had to be placed in a home where there was adequate enough care for her. She was in hospice. The grandmother eventually died in a nursing home in Maplewood shortly after she was admitted. When she was alive and in better health, it was always my son, the grandmother, and myself that was at home. She would always wander around the house. My bedroom was on the lower floor and directly above my room was my in-law's bedroom. Sometimes she would walk around upstairs, particularly wandering around my in-law's room. The house is old and creaks with every step, so you can definitely tell when someone is walking around. Also, when she was alive, but more towards the end of her life, she would come to my room and open and shut my bedroom door. It was due to her illness that she did that. Anywho, after she passed away, I don't think she left right away. Even though she died in a nursing home, I think she found her way back home. All was normal until her funeral. I started hearing things during the day. At the time, it was just me and my two-year-old son left at home during the day, but I would hear someone walking around upstairs, just like how grandma would do when she was alive. That presence would spend a lot of time wandering around the inside of my in-law's room. Sometimes, my door would rattle. It didn't open and shut the way she used to do it, but the rattling was more than enough. It was frightening because I knew it was just us and nothing else could have done that. I also heard random rattling of items around the house as if someone was cleaning or rearranging things. When grandma was alive, she was very restless and would do those things too. I was always very scared, so I would lock myself and my son in our bedroom. The scariest thing I experienced after her death was when everyone was home. I was in the basement alone. The basement was creepy enough because it's old and unfurnished. The house was built in the early 1900s and not much had changed about the basement. There is a bathroom at the far end of the basement near the washer and dryer, but it's kind of hidden by the boiler and all that basement machinery. The washer and dryer are located on the right side of the wall and the boiler stuff is in the middle, the center of the basement. The bathroom is on the left side of the wall. When you come down the stairs, everything is on the left side of the room. You can see the door of the bathroom when you walk towards that wall, but once you get to the washer and dryer, it gets blocked. Anyways, I was in the basement and I heard someone walk down the stairs. I thought it was my ex because sometimes he would use the basement bathroom. After taking out the dried clothes, I was putting my wet laundry into the dryer when I heard the door open. I knew it was opening because when you open the bathroom door, it creaks. I heard the creaking and that's why I looked up. And there I saw the bathroom door open with my very own eyes. When I had come down the stairs, the bathroom door was closed shut. The weirdest thing is that the door opened very slowly and no one turned the lights on. I waited for a few seconds to see if he would turn on the light, but nothing happened and I didn't hear him anymore. I thought that perhaps he was trying to scare me, so I did the dumbest thing. I giggled and tiptoed to the door which was wide open now, and looked inside. It was completely dark with no signs of life. All the hairs on my body stood up and I had the freakiest chill run through me. I walked back up the stairs and asked him if he went downstairs. My boyfriend said that he didn't come downstairs at all. I asked everyone if they went downstairs and they all said no. To this day, I cannot find an explanation for that event. Shortly after that, my sister-in-law had a dream of her grandma. 
In that dream, the grandma said to her that she was going to finally leave. Ever since then, I stopped hearing the walking and the rattling. I don't know if it was her in the basement with me since other strange things have happened before and after her death. But I hope that it was her because I would hate to know that it was something else. This happened about 20 years ago. Myself, my girlfriend, and her friend, her brother, and his girlfriend went out to play pool at TC Billards in Maplewood one night. After we were done, this was around 1 to 2 a.m. in the morning. We went to go start her brother's car and we couldn't open the door for some reason at the beginning. After we got in, the car wouldn't start. Despite having the key in the ignition and twisting it, the car would just not start. After an hour or so, we were magically able to start the car up. We then all looked at each other and said that it was weird. Afterwards, we proceeded to go back to my girlfriend's place. The group got there and we all settled in. Later that morning, her mom came into the room and asked us where we went last night. My girlfriend said that we just went to play pool and came home. Her mom replied, Well, I was just wondering because last night, it felt as if someone was choking me with that thing you locked the car with. And then your baby was crying so I got up to make him a bottle and I saw you standing at the other end of the hallway. I called your name and told you your baby was hungry but you didn't respond to me. As I walked closer to you, you started walking towards me. But slowly, your face was changing. When I got right up to you, all I saw was a red head, no eyes, nose, mouth, or any other features. So I just made the baby's bottle really quick and went back to my room. Just don't tell your dad. Don't tell him anything about this. I was awake the entire time to hear the whole thing. My girlfriend came back to bed and was afraid. Her brother also heard the story and we all kept our mouths shut. Later on, we all sat down to have some breakfast. Then her dad sat down. He was about to dig in into his food but stopped in his tracks. He looked at all of us and said, Who brought the redhead home with him? We all froze. My hair was standing on end. My girlfriend then asks, Dad, what are you talking about? What, what redhead guy? Her dad said, that redhead guy standing there in the corner. At this point, I was scared but just had to look. I turned my head to the corner of the room and I saw nothing. None of us said a single thing to him and he knew what it meant. Interested in sharing your stories? Submit them to momchronicles at gmail.com or in the description below. Here is the next story, thank you. When I was 8 years old, I started to see dead people. When I would see them, I would believe that it was just my imagination. My parents had their divorce the year before, so I thought maybe it may have been a way for me to plead for more attention. During that time, my dad, my brother, and I had just moved back to Minnesota from Cali because my dad could not find a job there. When we got back to Minnesota, we had to move in with our cousins. They had no children at this time. We were living with them in their home in Maplewood, Minnesota. My older brother had his own room and my dad and I shared one together. But there were times where I would go sleep with my brother because either I was scared or he was to be alone at night. The house had a washer and dryer in the basement. Every weekend, my brother and I would do our laundry together. One day, as I was putting our clothes into the dryer, my older brother decides to run up the stairs screaming, saying all sorts of things like there was a ghost in the basement. As he ran up the stairs, I screamed back at him, Don't leave me, I'm scared. My brother replied, if you don't put the rest of the clothes in the dryer, then I'm going to block the door and leave you in the basement. And so, he ran off. Wow, that's tough. After I put both of our clothes into the dryer and turned it on, I started walking to the stairs. 
I had this feeling that I was being watched over. I looked around my surroundings but could not find anything. I wasn't scared of the basement because it did look dirty and old like some basements. As I continued walking, I felt a chill down my spine. Suddenly, I heard a woman's giggle. <laughs> this time, for some reason, I had the feeling that whatever it was was above me. And so I looked. I saw a white humanoid figure crawling on the ceiling. It had no face and no clothes. It was practically naked. As I stared at the figure, a mouth started to form where the head was. Eyes suddenly appeared and then dark black frizzy hair started to grow from its head. Its eyes were bloodshot and locked onto me. And then it smiled. As it smiled, its tongue came out, hanging down, and its eyes started to bleed and this creepy laugh started to come out from its mouth. This laugh echoed in my mind. It laughed for what felt like hours, and then I finally snapped back to reality and ran up the stairs. I told my father about what happened, but he just told me that perhaps my eyes were playing tricks on me. After that, I never saw that lady or whatever it was again. However, at night, I could hear its laughter through my brother's air vent in his room. I never told him because he's a wuss and there was a probable chance of me getting beat up for it. After one year of living there, my father moved us out. Five years later, I went back to visit my cousins and slept over. I saw that creature or thing again in the kitchen. She was sitting on a chair, staring at me, smiling in the dark. I did what I usually do which was look away and ignore it. Ever since then, we don't go to that house anymore. I mean, I wouldn't go either. My aunt and uncle attended a funeral for one of my uncle's family members. It was at the Legacy Funeral Home in Maplewood, Minnesota. They were in line to eat when they noticed two guys wearing traditional Hmong clothes in line with them, but no one thought of anything because it was a traditional funeral. My aunt also didn't think of anything either, until she dropped a piece of meat under the table and went to pick it up. When she lifted up the plastic table cover, there was another guy under there, dressed just like the two Hmong people in Hmong clothes. He was licking the piece of meat that dropped to the floor. She was so scared that her face turned pale. That's when my uncle asked her if she was okay and she said no, so they soon left. As soon as they got to the stoplight, she told my uncle what she saw. Later on, when they got home, my uncle had to bleed to call her spirit back. Boy, do I have a story for you. Where do I even start? Let's see. How about the beginning? That's always a good place to start, isn't it? It was a nice and warm Saturday evening, and I had just gotten done playing soccer with my friends. As I crushed my water bottle, after depriving it of its last drop, my friend Thu called out to me. He was wondering if I was down to study at his place. I thought, why not, because we actually had a pretty big test coming up in school. The sun was beginning to set as everyone was heading their separate ways. Lou's house was quite a walk away, unfortunately, and the quickest way was to follow the state trail. It was a trail that literally ran across the state behind backyards, forests, and around lakes. I told them we had to hurry before it gets dark, and so we headed out. Down the trail, into the goddamn forest. After walking for a while, we, of course, pulled out our phones and started to catch Pokemons left and right. We were laughing and going crazy over all the Pokemons that were appearing. It wasn't long before my phone notified me that it was at 15% battery. I told Thu and he told me that his phone just died minutes ago. I thought it would be wise to save my phone battery, so I turned it off. I looked up at the sky and my first thought was, Huh, it got dark really fast like really fast. The sun was barely above the horizon. I looked at Thu. 
You could tell he was a little scared. I guess he wasn't used to being out in the dark. I was also beginning to think that he just wanted someone to welcome home. I didn't, I didn't mind though. I asked him about how soccer was earlier and if he laughed some more. That's actually not a bad idea. Like, if you're scared to go home alone, just tell one of your buddies to go with you and tell them that you guys are gonna go Pokemon hunting. Suddenly, a breeze roughly blows past us. It didn't feel like any normal breeze that you would take for granted or barely notice. This breeze was sudden and violent. We stopped dead in our track. Did you want to go the other way? Asked Thu. Nah, I'm fine. Why? I replied. Mm, no reason, he answered. Let's hurry. He starts walking ahead at a faster pace than before. I just wanted to get to his house before the sun officially falls beneath the horizon. I quickly followed him. We walked in silence for a while. Then it hit me. There was a funeral home coming up on the trail. Crap. That must have been why Thu asked me if I wanted to go a different way. At that moment, I wanted to say, you know what, let's actually go back the other way. But you know, us guys, we let our pride get the best of us. And honestly, if I had said that, I think I would have spooked the two of us even more. So I kept my mouth shut and we continued walking. With each step we took, the funeral home was coming more and more into view. It started with its beige corner peeking out from between the branches. A few more steps and you could clearly read the words, Funeral Home, which ran along the top of the building. I peeked at the horizon. Crap. All that was left was the soft golden glow upon the clouds. The sun had officially sunk. With a low hum, the streetlights turned on. It honestly didn't help us much because we were on the state trail. Only about every half mile or so, we would see a streetlight at an intersection. Hey, said Thu. Hmm? Yeah, what's up? Do, do you believe in ghosts? Was this dude crazy? I wanted to smack the soul out of him right there and then. We hadn't even officially reached the funeral home yet and he's asking me such a question. Bro, I don't think now is the right time to ask that, I warned him. I didn't say anything back. We reached the back of the funeral home and we both stared as we quickly walked by. I even held my breath. As soon as we walked past it, I knew we'd done messed up. Oh lordy, we messed up big time. The moment we walked past that building, I could tell. I could tell she was behind us. I could tell she was matching us step for step. I could tell. She was following us. Out of the corner of my eyes, I saw that Thu knew too. We weren't alone. Not anymore. I quickened our pace with Thu quickly matching up. Hey, hey, what's up? Asked Thu. Oh, nothing. I lied. My legs are just kind of tense, you know. I have to get the blood flowing again. Oh, oh yeah, me too. I'm really tense. My heart was beating faster than it ever did. Soccer was nothing compared to this. I didn't want to look back. I didn't need to. A few minutes later, I felt something that I will never forget. Cold puffs of air were running down the back of my neck. I then start to dramatically swing my torso, elbows out, left and right, left and right. I looked as if one of those people who did fast walking except more hardcore. What are you doing? Asked Thu. Nothing man, I lied again. I just felt my back tensing up. I thought I'd stretch it too, you know. That beam of light gave Thu and I the greatest boost of courage ever. I looked at him, and we both began to chuckle lightly. It quickly turned into a great big hearty laughter as we continued walking. At that moment, I thought to myself, screw it, I'm not afraid of you dumb ghost. I quickly turned my head around and there was nothing behind us. Was it all in my imagination? Up ahead was an intersection, and we saw the faint glow of a street lamp. Our laughter still roared through the forest as we walked. Then it happened. My phone died. Our once courageous laughter slowly turned small and frail. We then started to hear a small laughter that escalated louder and louder. 
It became high and shrill and was the worst thing that I have ever heard. I yelled out and the two of us bolted towards the intersection. We were screaming at the top of our lungs. Our lungs were burning and it felt as if they were going to break in half any second. I had never ran so fast in my life, oh, not even in soccer. How we made it out safely, I will never know. We collapsed under the lamp's heavenly beam of light, our eyes never leaving the direction in which we came. It was pitch black. I remember hearing the faint laughter from deep inside the forest. We then got back home safely and his grandfather did a few quick spells of protection on us. I slept over that night. Ever since then, nothing really happened to us, at least not yet. Sounds like a crazy homeless person. Maybe they wanted to play Pokemon Go too, you know? Anyways, thank you for listening. Subscribe.